So here's a quote. Blessed is he or she who can give without remembering and who receives without forgetting. Good, good quote. Cicero, a very famous Royal Roman orator, wrote a couple centuries ago, gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all the others. And I actually said a couple hundred years ago, actually a couple, a couple thousand years ago for Cicero. So we're learning some things about gratitude. I mean, there's one thing people say, be grateful, damn it, you know. Uh, and uh, I, I, have a, I have a good friend who said, who said her entire childhood was punctuated by uh, uh, comments from her father to the, to the children, you ingrates, you know. So, but this is a, a little bit more uh, scientific approach. So doctors McCullough and Edmonds have conducted a scientific study and they found that uh, gratitude plays a very significant role in someone's well-being. We know that all the great religions, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Hindu, prize gratitude as a morally beneficial state that fosters kindness. Uh, we know that really kind of at the center of all these major religions is the equivalent of the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's a, and, and it really is, it's in the form of a categorical imperative. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So there's two imperatives in there. And, and it really implies a posture of kindness. You know, you don't want to do something to somebody that you really wouldn't want them to do to you. Uh, so it, it immediately puts you in a, in a posture of thinking about kindness. Uh, so the research project on gratitude and thanksgiving involved several hundred study subjects. So this wasn't a, you know, one of these students in a psychology lab <laughs> experiments <laughs> where you get five bucks to take some silly test. So all of the study subjects had to keep a, a diary, a diary of daily events, that's one diary, a diary of unpleasant experiences, and a third, and most importantly, a diary of things for which they were grateful. So those who engaged in the daily gratitude exercises, because they divided them up, they didn't all keep all three of them, one group kept one, one kept another. The ones who, who, who engaged in the daily gratitude uh, diary resulted in higher levels of alertness, enthusiasm, determination, optimism, and energy, less depression and stress, and they were more likely to help others, make progress toward their personal goals, and to feel loved and cared about just by keeping a diary of things they were grateful for. We, all, we all, know, all know the phrase, what comes around goes around. So those who wrote down what they were grateful for found that they started a cycle of reciprocal, reciprocal kindness among others. Since one, when well, they were grateful, so they acted kindly towards somebody, which that person then reciprocated and you really began to get this cycle, uh, which of course made them feel a lot better. Interesting, health. So attitudes and acts based on gratitude are related to positive changes in cardiovascular and immune functioning. Well, that's pretty, pretty damn important. Cardiovascular illness kills a lot of people in this country and in other countries as well. And of course, with the pandemic raging around us, our, our enthusiasm about having a strong immune system is probably greater than it, than it has been, uh, and it should be. So a recent study showed improved heart, pulse, and respiration rates, and measurably lower stress rates for people who kept a gratitude diary. So here we have a study of 180 Catholic nuns 
and we analyzed their diaries, okay? And it showed that those who expressed gratitude in their diaries lived an average of 10 years longer than their peers who did not. And you'd think, you know, Catholic nuns, this is not a particularly resentful group. They're probably all, you know, pretty well along in the gratitude cycle. But those who expressed it, wrote it down in their diaries, 10 years. That's kind of amazing. So the gratitude cycle, and you're going to see, you see a, a picture of this. You're feeling grateful, so you act with kindness toward others. You get positive feedback because you've acted kindly toward others. You feel even better about yourself. Feeling better about yourself, you're feeling grateful, acting more kind. This is a wheel that just starts to roll and improves every cycle. What's the other one, the ingratitude cycle? You feel nasty. So you're nasty toward other people. You get negative feedback. What an asshole you are, you know. You feel even worse about yourself. So what do you do? You feel even, you know, you do something, you know, nasty. And that cycle also spins the wheel, but just going in the wrong direction. We're going to make the assumption that your cardiovascular system does not improve and you don't live longer involved in that cycle. So interestingly enough, in order to feel grateful, we have to think grateful first. Okay? So we have to recognize that we have a positive benefit. Some people, I mean, it can start with just, I'm glad I'm alive. I'm, I wake up in the morning, thank God, you know, I breathe, you know, uh, when we do in meditation. You enjoy each breath. You gotta get into the present moment and you're grateful for your life, for your friends. So you recognize you have a positive benefit. That that benefit has come from outside yourself, whether it's the air you breathe or it's a person who has been kind to you and gives a damn about your life, you know, and expresses that. And that the benefit was not necessarily earned. You know, it isn't like I'm owed this benefit because I'm so wonderful and I've done so much. It's more I just got this wonderful benefit by being alive and being in the presence of this other person or being in this magnificent place, okay? So as we think about this, people who had a grateful disposition by doing this, by thinking about this every day, were more positive, more empathetic, they tended to be more spiritual, not necessarily religious, but spiritual, and were less focused on material things. And we know that the fallacy of material things is no matter how many you get, you never have enough. So the old adage, count your blessings, seems to have a very practical application. The more you count your blessings, the better you feel, and in fact, the more blessings you have. So people who count their blessings don't necessarily have more blessings that you can count, like material things, uh, than those who don't. They just make the choice to be grateful. And it's a choice you make. Do I have enough or do I never have enough? Uh, am I happy for the friends I have or am I unhappy because I don't have, you know, a friend I wanted that I don't have? Uh, it's are you looking at the glass half empty or half full? And it's a, pers it's a personal habit, and it's a choice you make about your life, whether you're going to look at it from the point of view of being grateful for what you have and the relationships you have, or are you going to be resentful and unhappy? Uh, it really doesn't depend too much on your circumstances. So. If you really want to change your life, your health, your well-being, uh, and the circle of people around you who care about you, be grateful. Start with writing it down, saying it, noticing it every day. 
and watch your life improve. Can't beat that. <laughs>